Hey YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, I'm back at Hill Country Performance and Machine, and behind me you can see we've got Danny, and uh, behind Danny you can see that today is going to be very boring. This is, this is, this is actually going to be a boring day. I hope they can bear with us. Oh, I know. Yes, I hope that you can handle how boring this video is going to be. Uh, so today, we're going to figure out what pistons I'm going to need to buy. Um, we don't actually have time today because we're about to do Automotive Book Club. If you have not joined us for Automotive Book Club, you should. Um, but, but we are getting close to the time the Automotive Book Club should begin. So we don't have time to do all of the boring um, that we need to today. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to bore out the cylinder that is the worst, which you saw from my last video. If not, click up above right here and you will find the last video of my update for the engine build of Project 88. Um, so we're just going to see how much material we'll need to remove from the cylinder so that I know which pistons to buy because this is the time we're getting closer to the holidays, shipping times take forever, and uh, I want this project to continue moving forward. So we're taking a little bit of time here at the end of the day to bore out, what was it, cylinder, was it cylinder one? It was cylinder one, I think, that had all of the pitting, one or six, let me look at it now, it's cylinder one. Okay, so, all right, without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so you just took a measurement of the piston. Yes. And, and I can't read that. I know. Here, Three? 3.267. Okay. And that's in American, and this is in millimeters, and you know how we change, we convert over to millimeters. Right, 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 but, right. We cheat. <laughs> yes, 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 we cheat, which is okay, you can do that. Instead of calculating everything, get you one of these, hit that little button, convert, easy peasy. Um, in fact, we're going to tell you right now what it would have been in millimeters. We have, and to other people are going, you, you should know that. So it's what, 6298, 6297 millimeters, whatever. So there's the millimeters, and then we can just go... Bam, inches, three, two, six, six, and I got six, 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 seven, there it is, so. And right now we're just getting a rough thing. Since we don't have the piston, and we don't like to bore without the piston, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna stay small right now. Yep. So A, you stay small anyway because we're gonna hone. Right. So we, we wanna exactly. stay about, about three or four thousands under to hone. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of production shops only stay two thousands under because they don't wanna hone a lot. But honing, we can talk about honing, and it gets rid of all the little spikes from the boring. The right. boring is actually, think of it as ripping the metal. Yes. It's a cutter just sitting there ripping it. It looks fine, but it's actually the little jaggeds. So the honing, we're coming here, and we're getting rid of the spikes. We're getting all the little spikes out of there. So we need to have metal there to be able to hone. So uh, we're going to stay small anyway. We're going to stay about 4,000 small. So it's, even though we don't have the piston, the piston can vary a thousand or two. Right. If you're going to get the Wiseco piston like you're talking about, or we're going to do a CP Corello or J, those don't vary much at all. If we're going to get a stock production piston, not a Toyota one, an American one, they vary a lot. <laughs> uh, the Toyota ones is almost like laser cut. I don't know how they make them, but anyway. So let's get Toyota to, magic. Yes, it's, it's like precision right out of the box. That's why, you know, I, I joke a lot, but... Uh, Toyotas and Hondas are just, they're blueprinted for, uh, from the block. I've even shown you, yeah. how, even on the mains and the rods. They're right. literally blueprinted from the factory. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're actually really good. So. I, always, I always love a little chance to, to be a Toyota. Toyota fangirl. Toyota fan team today. We'll, we'll, we'll take that. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, wait a second, Danny. I thought you said this was going to be a boring video. It's going to be a boring video, oh, but it's kind of cool. Okay. It's fun if you like mechanical stuff. So th this is uh, this plate up on top. It's a perfectly machined plate. So we can mic this plate anywhere we want, and it's perfectly flat. So the block's going to go here. We're going to put it inside. It gets up against this plate. And then now when we hit the air float up here, look at this. This is extremely heavy, but it just oh, floats because wow. it's air. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's going to center in the bore. And then when we're centering the board, we're going to unfloat it, and then we're actually going to lock it. And then it doesn't move anymore. Unlock and then float. And then now that it's floating, look at that. Whoa. Yeah. And that's what you want, because there's fingers in here, and we turn this knob. Those little fingers are coming out now. See that little fingers coming out? Yeah. And there's th three of them. Uh -huh. And One that, of little... so when we start, what we do is we're going to put this down. There, you can yep. see the fingers now. Uh -huh. yep. There you go. So when we turn this, the fingers come out and it's centered up in the bore. Perfect. Once it's centered, then we just lock it in lock place. It and lock it, yeah. All right. And well, let's, uh, let's get that engine on there. Okay. Sure. All right. And we'll start to deck and it has to be there quite a bit. The more I look at it, look, look at the yeah. Oh, the totally ring. The oh is my really god. Bad. Yeah. But, uh, we'll deck yeah. It. So that, that's another thing too. It's like 
I can't buy the head gasket that I want, which also is probably going to take a while to get here until but do we know, uh, how, we know how much material they're going to take off of it. But yeah, actually, let me let me show that on camera. And that's also this. That's it's the same cylinder. But yeah, so if you can see from the surface finish here, this has to be completely smooth. I'm going to be using a metal head gasket. It requires a certain finish, and wow, like. I don't know, I feel like it is so much worse it's in person than you're ever going to see on camera, but I'm trying to... And what we'll do is when we put it on the mill, we'll just do a 1,000th cut and you'll see it all. Oh. It's just like when we bore. When we start yeah. boring, you're going to see, it's going to be like open your eyes up with everything in there. Yep. But they're quite a, yes. And what it is, is Toyota has actually like an O-ring head gasket. Yes, it I'm does. A, I'm going to call it that because it does have a ceiling and that actually deteriorates, even though this is metal, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and, it does. What, like the even though it's like a factory fiber gasket, there's like little metal rings. There's a metal ring on there. the outside of every. Single and what people don't realize cylinder. is, every day that it cycles, it gets hot, it gets cold. The head, being aluminum, yep. expands at almost twice the rate. So think about the head doing this, and the block only moving a thousandth, mm -hmm. but the head moving this a lot. Right. And you go, ah. That's how that. I happens. see how what because you're thinking, how did it? How did it? deteriorate how did it eat into the deck yeah well think of two real tight surfaces with a steel ring in the middle moving back and forth i'm also wondering if there is some like hydrolysis that happened as well you know there's a lot of all kinds remember we had remember how dirty the water is i think the water was was so rusted and dirty from from being parked forever oh yeah that was that that issue so definitely we had all kinds of issues <laughs> Got okay. issues. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull these two pins out. All right, so we're going to be removing these pins here, and this is uh, this is the method that um, Danny uses. Thanks to Chief, and give a little resonant frequency, just sort of tap it. Not super crazy hard, but just a little bit of tap in there to let whatever penetrating lubricant, or in this case, Smokey's honing oil, get in there. That's a crazy. Cool. Did you make that? Yeah, long, is long, that long, a handmade tool? Sometimes you gotta take a torch and I'll, I'll have to show you. Look at that. Danny's tool! <laughs> he made it! Wow! That, I you mean... Got, sometimes you gotta improvise. Yeah, so, no uh, joke, no joke. Yeah, buddy. Alright, so that's on there. Alright, so wait, I need that tool now. <laughs> you need those. There you go. That yeah, is cool tool, Danny. Yeah, that so, pin is smooth. Let's see how you did. Yeah, well, see, the problem is that I'm so weak that uh, when I put forth a lot of effort and it looks like it's really tight, it still might not be really tight, so. Voila! Ah, Ta-da! Pin is removed. And <laughs> not damaged anything. And not damaged. A lot of people will damage these removing them and then replace them, but with this method, um, Danny will actually just put these in upside down. So this part that's been protected in the engine block for, I don't know, its entire life, since 1988, um, this part has been like preserved and still a nice, crisp, clean part of the pin. So we're just gonna install these afterwards um, upside down. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like you got brand new pins. So you can see here the part of the pin that was exposed and here's the part of the pin that was in the block. I, I took a bunch of bolts and I will. Oh, I, oh my god, I have so many extra. I, I make two um, of bolts even. I love that. That would have been so helpful the other day because when I was lifting the block out, oh, that's a funny story. That's a terrible story to tell you. When I was removing the block from the, I, was, I just used the motor mounts. And it's hard because like the front of the engine's a little bit heavier, so it's like just sort of figuring out. And so on those guys, this would be awesome. Mm hmm. Because um, then you just weld some two, but I would weld two there. And like what I do is I put something that. at the bottom. I love that. So that look at this. Look at these that. tools. That This is what we're talking about. Look at these tools that Danny made. It's head bolt, but then it's like a usable tool out of a head bolt. So I, I love this. I'm I'm gonna definitely gonna definitely gonna do a little bit of that. I need one of these in my shop so bad. Oh, eBay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So what is it gonna do? It sits on the mains. So it sits on the mains. That's what's gonna put the pressure up. What we do? We have different rings, and I like to pick one that fits the main, as opposed to having the bar just being the real loose. Oh and yeah, I, totally. I, so I have different ones. I even have some that are made. I have a boxes of them. I put taper on them. This already has taper on it, and it actually fits perfect. So we go. Oh, that's don't have, perfect. Yeah, that's going to be right on the on the mains. So now, all we're going to do is we're going to 
And that's how you know that you're setting it up perfectly for yes, the, boring the, accuracy. Yeah, and the, the beauty of this one, if the, the bottom will, will adjust itself to this plate. Oh, heck Like I yeah. said, the bottom of this plate is machined just like the top is. And that's what's going to go on the deck on the top. And Toyota machines everything off of the oil pan rail. So we know everything's par parallel. So we're going to go and take these two rings off. Add these two rings. One's going to go over there. One's going to stay over here. And come on down. Put that ring on right about there somewhere. So me and your... Yeah. You good? Yep. And then... Okay, so that little, you call that a cradle? It's a little, yes. A little cradle. Oh. And we want to do it so that it can adjust itself. Right, 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 uh, right, right. But it makes it much easier than having to hold it the whole time. Oh, yeah, of it's course. Just, it's like an extra hand. Fantastic. And I think we determined that... The worst one? Wasn't it the pitted one on cylinder one, I cylinder think? Cylinder one is really bad. That's, I think that... Yeah, see that I think one. that was a... The one that looked really the worst. Well, yeah, looked the worst. But as you always tell me, looks can be really deceiving with these. Yeah, yeah and well, then... look. Yes, look down there. Yeah. Oh, Let's see that man. one first. Okay. Yeah, so the ones we're debating on are one and three being the worst. Look at three is pretty bad, too. But, yeah, Danny, I'm thinking. Yeah, because look at number four, how beautiful it was. Oh, it it this is the whole other one. If they had not let water get in there, this would have gone with hone and rings only. Ah. Uh, yeah, so this is, remember, this is my spare block that someone donated to me because they rod knocked their engine. And uh, they had rod knocked on number four and then just let this engine sit for a very, very, very long time. It wasn't outside. It was in their garage. But, um, but yeah, I thought, I thought for sure that number four was going to be the worst. And, and lo and, and behold. <laughs> and this is the sought-after turbo block. Yes. And there's not much difference besides the pin orders. Yeah, the so, oil squirters. Yeah, the oil well, squirters. and the drain for the turbo. Yeah. Uh, and gosh, is there anything else that's different? I think that's it. <laughs> it's, either, it's either a forklift or a turbo car. One or the other. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go. Come on, uh, look at this. Magic Ooh, car. it is magic. And then. Hello. All right, well, it's time to get super boring. If you've if you've hung in this long on this video, we're very impressed. Yes. Because yes. we're about to, I mean. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> okay, so these here are look like just regular bars. Yeah, they do. But it's actually precision machine. You can, you can mic this anywhere throughout it, and there's no taper or angle or anything. Wow. And then what we do, even though this is clean all the time anyway, I wipe the bottom that there's nothing old gasket or anything we know the imperfections are there you can even see all the little humps oh my god but yeah. we're trying to bring in and I, I mentioned this before you see those lines yes the That's grain the fact when they cut it yes so you can actually see the grain starting to come up. Yep. And that's all we want. Just make sure that we're nice and flat. Because if there's something under here, a gasket or anything, then it would um, it would change our angle. And that's all. It didn't take anything off. The Toyota blocks are so hard anyway, it doesn't really do much. But it just allows us to know that it's clean. So, in we go. Like that, just touch. Right about there. And then go to the middle. So, now we're still a little loose. Okay. I can place my bars where I want them. That's why we pull the pins. Yeah. Oh, why now it makes sense. Pins? I was like, why do you want those out right now? We're yeah. not even... I thought be... it was in preparation for surfacing the block, but... Yes, and we, we need them out anyway. But yeah. if you notice the bars, the pins up here, they go right where those bars were. Oh, yep. Because yep, we, yep, we yep, want to yep, be yep. off of the... We don't want to be in the, you know, in the bore. Yep. So we want to be out a little bit. So I like to just make them flat right on that makes the sense. edge. Right on the edge. There we are. Now, I'm going to pop all the way. It's just old like me. You hear that? Yeah. That's what I was. It's clamping down. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I get used to that sound. So, earlier didn't make it, and you know, and, and our, our bars were a little loose. So, yeah. Hey, look at that. Can't move the bars. It's good. It's just old little tricks like that. Yep. Like I said, if it doesn't make that noise that I was used to hearing. Yep. And it was just... Then little, you know. Yeah. Yep, something yep. Wasn't, wasn't... I wasn't happy. But anyway, now I'm happy. I wasn't happy. Okay. 
So, and if you notice, I keep a lot of rags on top of here. Yeah. Because we never want to lay anything down on, on, the, on these plates. On a rag, it's okay, like a mic or something. But right. we don't want to put all pistons or anything on here. Okay. So we're and good. is that just because you don't want to damage the perfectly machined surface? Yes, or? because any little nicks on this plate. Yeah. Now that we know that this, this machine is really, really an old style machine, so it's really analog. Yeah. So that being said, if there's a nick on the plate or in here, it could make the deck a little crooked. Right, yeah, right, so, right. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. but this will do precision work if you just to treat it the way it should be treated. So yep. if there was a little nick on here, it could actually stop this from actually floating really right, good. Right, 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 and right. And then you'd end up with a bore a little crooked or something. So that being said, that's why the reason it floats like that is because it's nice and smooth. And you can see there's even oil on it and stuff. And, you know, so we want to just, you know, older stuff, we want to just take care of. We're going to take this out and we'll set this up. We'll set this up. These are the bits that, that we have. It's a titanium bit. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to put a fresh start to it. It was my first cut. And then there was, you know, and I changed it. First cut. And then I ended up going to, that was my first cut. That's my second cut. See, I even had a three and a four. Wow. So that block actually ended up being softer, so I was able to bore more on it. Okay. But I generally try to do a 10,000th cut. And that's like just like a trick that you use. So even, to yes, so don't be, her. like I said, you know, don't be embarrassed. If you got to write stuff on your hands, your feet, your whatever, <laughs> sticky notes everywhere, if you get I it done do right, it doesn't oh, matter how you do it. Exactly. So don't, don't think that, oh, you know. A machinist doesn't, or whatever. You do whatever you got to do to do whatever you got to do. Yes, people Thanks. people judge. People will judge other people's processes, but there's really no right or wrong way to do the process as long as the end result is good. No, it's good. I, said, yeah. I, I literally, man, you, 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 you'll see. We're going to float it, and all I'm doing is these three little fingers. I'm going to bring them in right now. Okay. And to make sure we have the right ones in it, because there's a whole bunch of different fingers in, so the, that, in the kit. Those are going to center inside of the cylinder. Yeah, and then I'm going to float it and get it right in the middle here. And like I said, I have different fingers for different bores. This one happens to be the right fingers for this bore. Oh, heck yeah. I'm going to put it about the middle, then it's floating. Mm -hmm. We're going to get sit here and bring the fingers out, and you'll even see how you'll... There we go. The fingers are out now. And one thing, another trick my uncle would do is turn the fingers to wipe them clean. So there could be something in the bore, and you see I'm just turning the whole boring head. Yep. So those fingers are going to come out. If they have a little piece of grit or something in there, by doing this as I'm snugging it, kind of gets anything out from underneath those fingers. Yep. So it's just a little, a little Love there, it. and then we're going to tighten it. Once it's tightened, now I'm going to sit here, and I like to just sit here and get this pretty much parallel with this. We're there. I'm going to unfloat it, and then we're going to lock it. Now it's locked, I can bring my fingers in, and I can bring it all the way up, or I can do that. Go. There we are. Now I want to just bring the fingers in like one turn, so they're out of the way. Fingers stay there, they're out of the way, they're not hurting anybody. And thing, you are certain now that it's centered in yeah. the cylinder bore. Yeah. So like, have you ever had an oblong cylinder or anything yes. like that, where it's and then how do you know how to get it perfectly well, the, in the center then? I'm real anal and I'll take forever. I'm more, I don't know, you want to use the word beep when I edit that. I'm just real, you know, we were, you know, I'll take the time to double and triple check something. Yes. As opposed to knock it out real fast and then screw it up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a zero cut, a zero one thousandths. Perfect. Hey, that's going to yep. check everything. That's yep. going to check our mic. That's going to check. This could have fallen. Somebody could have messed with it. Everything else. If I set this up and go to the size, I already bore it. So if I just do a one thousandths cut, it should just touch. If I touch on one side of the bore, but nothing here, I'm going to stop. I'm going to clean everything and reset it up. Yep. If it does it about three times, after I move the fingers around, we got an oval cylinder. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So, that's a, so my first cut is just a, a, an eye opener for me. I, I want to see that it's going in the bore and it's centered right. The boards are going to be crooked. The factory boards are crooked. Let's see how I tell you. Wait, really? Do. Factory boards are crooked? Oh, yeah. That's why when you do blueprinting, the first thing yes. we do is we deck it. We, you know, we deck it first. This is a straight six, so it, it's flat, but on a V8, it's a little bit different too. So, you know, so the, the very first thing, they're off a lot, up to 7,000 <gasps> off. So it's no a, yeah. way. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, so you get some of like really an OEM, mm -hmm. like from the factory. All, all, all factory stuff is, is, is you know, it's production stuff, is right? a little bit different. Uh, we can just have a little title of that. Yes. That's fine. That's, All right, that's good. so let's okay. go with, we know we got that there. 3.267. So 
So we're going to use our mic, and we're going to go to three, and then every one of those, the big lines is one, two, three, four, and there's 3.5. Yep. Six, seven, eight. So what, right now, let's go ahead and go, there's one, and there's two. There's my zero. So I'm at 3.2. Then there's 3.3, 3.4, and 3.5. Oh, nice. So, okay. So we're at 3.2, and then we need 67. So we can just go ahead and go 25, 30, 40, 50, 55, 60, 65, 67. So right now, it should just touch hardly anything. All right, let's see. Actually, 67 shouldn't do much of anything. Let me get my little oh, first. and there we go. And there's my first little dot, just as a, as a, a tester. These are different lengths. And the spring you can move out. That's a spring that we want on the back side. That puts What's that? Oh! See, you had to, gotcha. it pops yep. out. Yep. So basically right now what am I doing? So wait, I see what's happening here. So this goes into the center. Mm -hmm. Does it stop in the dead yes. center? Yeah, I, sh I should have explained that. No, no, no it's okay. I'm no. figuring it out as we go along here. You see that V right there? Yeah. Inside the machine, there's a ball bearing with a spring. And it, see this, this the tip here? Yep. So it's going to stop every time on that tip. Right. So this mic is what sets the cutter. Yep. So that's that's it. So as that would make sense. Yes. As you're, as you're, <laughs> push it in and you'll feel. Yep. See, and then try to even pull it. See how it. Yep. We're there. Yep. And, that, and that's yep. what we're that's there. for. So gotcha. that that's that's it. Zero every time. Whatever you have on here, it's actually half the distance of a circle. Yep. So there we are. So right now I know that we're good because sometimes if this is sticking out too far. The cutter slams against it, and it doesn't have that spring load. Okay. So what okay. we want to do is, I want to make sure that I can push it in, and see. Gotcha. So yep. I know it said it yep. said perfect. Yep. So there we are. We're there. Here is what tightens it, and you don't have to get medieval with it because <laughs> inside of here, if you could see that little plate there, it doesn't have a screw against this. It has a plate. And that screw is it. touching the plate. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you see how it's at a taper? Uh-huh. So once you it's snug not it, going anywhere. Yeah, it clamps the whole thing. Yep. It's not like putting an Allen screw up against it. Because if you put an Allen screw up against it, when you turn the Allen screw, it can move the mic. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. So it's yep. a bar, and it just squeezes it, and, and, that's, yeah. and that's it. Another trick that my uncle would do is cover it up. We don't want dust in there. Yeah. So this is just... accurate. This is I just, was wondering what that little thing was. Okay. It's just a, home, a vacuum plug. <laughs> And there's a little brush for cleaning out the side. I clean them all, all the time. But if you just cap it, I mean, golly, it just, yeah. it just makes sense. Yeah, Come just on. Think common things. sense is not that common. Anyway. Yeah. We know that. We, we know. Ah, are we ready? I think. We so ready? excited. So we're going to go down. And what else are we going to do? We're also going to set our stop. It has an automatic stop. When we go at the bottom, if this keeps boring, this is real long, we'll catch our webbing. That's the webbing that we talked oh, about when we were the honing. Yes, we yes. don't want to break any stones. So as soon as it comes out of the bottom of the bore, we want to set our, our stop. Once the stop is set, we're comfortable. For the very first one, it's always the little bit the tougher one. We'll go, that's why I have a light underneath and we can look for underneath. We can also, we can listen to it. Yep. And we can see, see the little light that, so it brightens up the cylinder. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a little homemade thing that I made eight years ago. This so that we don't just blow stuff on top of us. I think we're ready. I think we're ready. Are we ready? That might be my favorite tool you've ever made. <laughs> you know. And then, yeah, I had somebody using it for notes. Oh, <gasps> rude! Uh oh, was that it's me? It's a box top. I, don't I, go, I know. Oh. But Marco would always do that, so I do it. I don't know. All right. I think we're ready. I think we're ready. Okay. okay. We got it locked in. Lock, lock, lock. We're ready. Go. Let's do this. We're going to go on fast right now because we're just testing. It's spinning, but you see how it's not doing anything? Yep. And then now we're gonna go like that. We really shouldn't hear anything. Okay. Because I set it up to the size of the piston. Right, which right. Is, which is what I'm expected. Right now we've heard Exactly, yes. exactly. So this is just a good. test, making sure that we're exactly in the center and also making sure like checking the cylinder for roundness. Yeah. Or I guess out of roundness. And it's so good that, uh... Oh, I hear a little something. Well, that's a little uh, uh, vibration, but it's not really... It's just knocking off the, the, the honeymoon. It's awesome. Wow. Okay. So, 
Can we do so we're down at the bottom now? And also, I can still go further. In fact, I need to just go ahead and go further until we get to the bottom. There we are. And if you see the cylinder, all we literally did is take honing oil off of it. Yep. <laughs> That's amazing. Because we're one thousandths for, we're at the bore size. Oh, what? That means we went all the way up, all the way down, and we didn't touch the bore. Let's go ahead and get past that. Let's get past this. Okay. Let's get past it. We're gonna get. We're gonna go forty, right? Yeah. I, I, I like to ease up on it. Oh, totally. And do small cuts because it's an older machine, and I can do real finesse. And my mouse machine, we can cut eighty thousand in one cut. We're not. We're not. Oh. We're not. We're not that much in a hurry. Okay. So. Nah, we're not. We're never in a hurry. So that's going to be our first cut, and then I'm going to see here, that's going to be our test window, and then we're going to add another channel. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. And what, what, what does it mean by a test window? Is we're going to cut 10, and we know we're going to 277, right? Yep. Then we're going to mic it. If it's oh, 276, verify. then I go plus one next time. Yep. See? Okay. If it, okay. Because as the cutter gets dull, it gets hot, and it expands. It cuts more. As gotcha. the cutter's cold, it shrinks. <gasps> yep. So I don't know how much nickel is in this block. So instead of me fighting it, it's going to talk to me and I'm going to go, okay, I, I got what you want to do. So if I cut 10 and it cuts 10, beautiful. But if yep. I cut 10 and it cuts 9, you got a, a lot of nickel on your block. See, there's a lot of different variances. So well, why fight it? Just embrace it. Lock it, set it, and forget it. There you go. Now we're going to go ahead and go fast. We can go ahead and go, look at that. All right, here she goes. Mm -hmm. Leave it open so that you can see. And normally don't smoke that much, but we have honing oil. We have honing oil, yeah. So I would always clean the bar going up instead of bringing that stuff up into the bar. Okay. You want oh, to know, that? You want to know why it sounded? Interesting. Why it sounded weird? Yeah. Because there's no. It's not cutting all the way no around. There's no cylinder there. Yeah. But we know we're centered, like beautiful. Yeah. For a three thousandths cut, look how it's top to bottom, left to right. It was it's centered beautifully. Cool. So the noise that we're in is because we we have a lack of cylinder. <laughs> yes, 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 definitely. <laughs> okay. One. There's our one. Yes. Yep. So let's go ahead and go five, ten. Let's go ahead and make this our two. deck all the way up there you go you just engage the clutch now see really bad but or any pits can you feel any holes uh, still a little bit here feel yep. with your fingernail there's a little bit on that side yes now how much can you bore these oh, it was weird to overbore them obviously you can overbore but like you know there's obviously only so much thickness in between the cylinders so you know do you get to a point where it's, it's, you bore too, it's much? too much generally you have 20 over first mm -hmm. 30 over 40 and then 60 why isn't there a 50 I don't know. We won't get into that, but it's weird, isn't it? What happened to fifty? I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who. Ah, uh, okay. I, I didn't get paid that day. So if we, so day. if we, okay. So this is the final cut before we are at our maximum before we hone for the piston. This is so, about as big as we want to go without actually having the piston. So yeah. this is going to be. This the, is the final cut, mm -hmm. and this will tell us everything. Yes. All right. Will okay. it clear forty? So, so bring it down. Shall see. Almost, you can turn it on now. Okay. Four. And down. Uh, it's this down. way. Fingers crossed that it clears up. Oh, God. I'm so nervous. Okay, right there. Kick it to hop it. There we go. Clutch in. Come on, friends. You can 
do it! And then tonight you'll be blowing out Toyota dust. Oh yeah. Toyota than, and smoky dust. I'll take it. Yeah, there you go. It's better than Ford dust. Yeah. It did sound a little smooth anyway, right there. Mm -hmm. Alright, so. That time. Okay, so we're gonna put this, yeah. And you didn't use no fingers for your hair. Ah, it's a miracle. I don't know how I did it. Ah, okay, so we still got some staining going on. You can still see the pitting. Ooh. And a little pinhole is not really well, really concerned as much, uh, but it's still, it's a there's lot. just so many of them. Yes, yeah. yes. If it was just one, like, oh, hello. And, and and people are looking at the bottom going, but I can see the bottom is all around. Well, that's the water stain. Yeah. That's the water stain. And yes, we want to get rid of that as well. Right. That's the water stain. And These are the pinholes. The pinholes that we're not really the happiest with. Um, Man, I might have to get another block, huh? Well, we have an option of sleeving, but uh, as Spock would say, damage him. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. Um, well, we have options. We have, we're now, no, well, that's what we were doing. Yep. Uh, you, you, you can't be mad at answers. I mean, yeah. it, it is what it is. <laughs> yep. But, but we're not guessing anymore. So now, now we know that no, that it's not going to clear 40. Yep. The pitting was just too bad. So now we have to punt. All right. So, so now, we, yes, like I said, you, you know, we we, uh, we can't get mad of knowledge. We found this out. That's why we did this. I can still get mad if I want to. Yes, or bummed. <laughs> we, we, we're most definitely bummed. Okay? Yeah. But we found out that going 40 over isn't going to take away the pitting that the cylinders have. Yeah, especially okay. after finding those pistons on sale. I was like, this is this is the answer. This is, okay, so, right. okay, okay, so right. we're taking that off the board now. Okay, we can't, we, we couldn't hone it. We couldn't bore it to 40. So what's left? We can throw the block away, but that's not, really, block. You, and that, that's not really an option unless you had another readily available block. I, I, I don't. I mean, I can, I can ask and try on to the find internet. another one. If anyone has a 7M GTE block, if anyone has a turbo block, and we're, and we're willing to bore it, you know, yes, we are willing to bore it. Uh, yeah. Um, but it has to clear 40. But so, so okay. okay. So what would the options be if this was came in, into the shop? It's still not done. We can put a sleeve in it. Yeah. We, we can we can put a sleeve in the cylinder, and a sleeve is just a. Here's a sleeve. It's not the size for this motor <laughs> here, but yep. we would bore it bigger, and then we would leave a step at the bottom, and then we would press in a sleeve all the way into it. We would leave a step, so as we're boring out, we wouldn't go all the way out the bottom. We would stop every time about a quarter inch before getting out the bottom. That way, when we press in the sleeve, it can't drop. That's one of the things that a lot of people don't do is, is they don't leave a step. So the sleeve moves on, and you hear all these horror stories. Oh, the sleeve moves, the sleeve slid, all that. I see. I was like, ooh, I don't want to put a sleeve in it because I know what happens when you put sleeves in it. They, but I think you yeah. probably just answered my question right there. So what we would do <laughs> is we would leave a quarter inch stuff. So we would set our, our boring bar up to a quarter inch shy of going out the bottom. It stops every time we come. We, we you know we finesse, we kick it. We, and we that little it. bit keeps it from moving at the bottom. Yes. Now when we put the sleeve in, we go all the way in up against that step yep. we did. Yep. The sleeve sticks out of above the deck now. We cut it pretty close and then we go deck the block. Yep. Okay, now okay. where can it go? The head goes on the top, it can't move. It and can't we, go at the bottom. We have a right. press fit on there, but yep. we're not relying on the on the press fit. Because yes, it can't go up and it can't can go down. Right. Done. Right. And okay. it's just uh, perfect. We have we have <sighs> boosted race motors. Uh, what it uh, um, Bert made on his blown 632 over 2,000 horsepower on a sleeve motor. So it just depends on, on if you know what, what you're doing. It doesn't. So sleeve is not it doesn't bother us. But if we had to do two or three or four sleeves, it could get a little costly. Right. So that's the issue right. uh, that we have with that. But that is an option, and we're right. not leaving. We're not leaving that. So I'm, now is the third option still boring it over to like sixty over? If you could find a sixty over piston. Piston, okay. And is or, there any or, harm? Or having a custom piston made. And sometimes we well, do that. That sounds like it's getting very expensive. That, that's an option, but not really yeah. effective. Okay, now, so I'm going to check the availability of 60 over pistons because that might be the easiest. My concern, though, is I mean, there's only so much space in between the cylinders. How do you know if 60 over is too much for the engine? 
to handle. My uncle chief would. Is that a handmade tool? Yes, he would make it out of a coat hanger, but I made that one just out of aluminum. Don't stop what you're doing. It'll be on the on the link at the bottom. We'll be selling these piston and pixie dust uh, uh, tools. Isn't that cool? Now, uh, okay. I have a sonic tester, and we can sonic test the block. Okay, uh, we can go over over. At a certain point, we're going to have too thin of a cylinder, right? Especially for a boosted application. Well, and what's too, what's too thin? Like, is that is that going to vary from uh, on, block to on, block? On application, yeah. We generally don't want to go. I don't like to go anything under a hundred. You know, they, some people have gotten away with the eighty, ninety thousands. No, we don't want to go there. Around a hundred is good. I like a little bit more than that. If I'm going to go with a thin wall sleeve, I want to I want to up to an HP sleeve. The HP sleeve is a real high nickel sleeve. So it's going to be a, a, a Dalton or an LA sleeve or a, a better, nicer sleeve than just a, that one is a good sleeve, but it's just a cast sleeve for a cast block. Okay. So if we're going to go to something that's going to be a little better, I'll, I'll put an HP at the, at the end of the sleeve number and that's high performance, super high nickel. Okay. So if okay. this is neat because you have this right here, you go to Junkyard, you go to whatever, and you don't need a sonic tester. When that touches there, that touches there. Yep. So all okay. I have to do is put this in the bore and go like that and tell us how thick our cylinder is real quick. Well, look how thick your cylinder is. Yeah, it's thick. W w what did I tell you? And I'm not, I wasn't joking or being... This is an industrial motor. Yeah, this is an industrial motor. It's a forklift. It's an industrial motor. That's what I love about Toyota. They don't skimp on the... Yes, Toyota's weigh a little bit more and I'm comparing it to a Honda. Toyota goes a little bit to the extreme and their stuff's a little heavier, but that's why. Yeah. Everything is thick. It's like a, it's a forklift motor. I mean, then. when I see this much here, oh, I would say six silver is nothing. And I have to see if this is a Siamese. Is there water in between here or not? No, I, I not that I know of. So if it's no water in between the cylinders, that's called a, a Siamese bore. Okay. So there are two cylinders that are connected like the Siamese twins. Yes. So there's no water in between. Right, if right. If water in between, that is not a Siamese bore. I, don't, so, I do not think that there is, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm no expert. 228? Let's just call it 200 and let's be friends. I mean, <laughs> I mean no, So no. what you're saying is this, can, this, this motor absolutely can handle some more boring. So I didn't go to I, college and I don't know anything, but uh, that's that's what I'm seeing right there. I'd boost the bejeebas out of that without any problem. I put a lot more boost on a lot less cylinder. Okay. Uh, um, so there, that's another way. What we would do is we would just give it the little... I have a sonic tester, too. It could be another video, how to sonic test a cylinder. Uh, um, and we could sonic test cylinders and see if there's any core shift. That's what, what... This is cool because it tells you that. And actually, I'm a physical guy, and I can look and visibly see that. Right. I'm more comfortable in that than a little screen, and it gives me a digital number that i got to rely yeah, on. Yeah, for so real. So a lot of times, even when I'm sonicking, my sonic has to match this. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, uh, this has never let me down. Um, also, the reason you kind of want a sonic test if you're getting kind of crazy, if you're going to get to the close, we don't want core shift. What does core shift mean? They made the mold, and when they poured the concrete, concrete, when they poured the cast iron into it, <laughs> it could have shifted, and it probably did. So we might be making a cylinder spot that's 200 or something. On this side, it may be 80 because oh, it's shifted. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. See? Okay, yeah. So we want to make sure that we check for core shift. Bad core shift. Oh, God. You see what I'm talking about? Yes. Good core shift. Ah. So this is going to be a tip when you're going out and you're looking for a block to use as a race motor. So here, when they casted this, it didn't shift much. Nope. Look at the thickness. Yeah, it looks great. You think I would use this as a race motor? Hell What no. happened to all of the core shifting? It shifted this way. Yeah. Okay? So the cylinders on one side are going to be thin, and on one side are going to be extremely thick. Weird. So had I checked it, I'd gone, oh my God, we got 200 and something. We yeah, don't have it over the there. Side. This wouldn't yeah. be a block that I would use for much of anything. So for now, go through the motions and bore them all to 40. And we're, and we're staying under. Because then at least I'm learning. Yeah. So, all right. So if we, if I bore them all to 40... And every single one is good, aside from this one, which obviously is not. Then, one sleeve, what's the harm? However, if they are all yes. still... If we have two, three, after. four... If this was a numbers matching 428 Cobra Jet, I put eight sleeves before. Because <laughs> cool. you have a, a 428 Cobra Jet and a Shelby Mustang. Well, oh. guess what? The numbers match the VINs. They don't care what the... I mean, I shouldn't say... They don't. It's more important that that block stay with that car. Yes. 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 In this case, this, this is, case it, it's not. Even though they're a little harder to find, um, it wouldn't be a candidate for it. But if it's one sleeve, it's very cost effective to put one sleeve in a block. Okay. Because we save the block and we're moving on. 
Okay. So at this point, what's it going to hurt to go ahead and bore the rest? If we bore it's the rest and you need eight or eight, how what would you need eight sleeves? <laughs> you need eight sleeves and somebody's taking advantage Six, of you. Six, seven, eight. Yes. <laughs> so I think that's a good, like I said, it, it, we, now we know. Now we know. Now we know. It's a good thing we didn't order the pistons yet, or you didn't order them yet because... Oh, I wasn't going to order them. I wasn't, I wasn't, after the honing experience. I actually thought it, it might hone out. Remember? I thought it might have some stains in it, but not as bad as the pits that were. And then it was like, oh my God. Yeah, no, it's not even, now, it's, now we're not even boring. So, no. Um, all right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, at least we know what we're going to do.